Hey everybody, Spicy Knees here. As you may have recently seen, I got screwed in the rear end. And as you may have seen in the following video, I got myself home using some tire weld. And people said, oh well, it's in a good place, you know, middle of the tread, not the sidewalls or anything, no problem. Just plug that. Just plug that. Yeah, you can't do that. Generally, there are two types of motorcycle rims. Spoked and cast rims. Now in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between cast rims, spoked rims, tube and tubeless, and also explain why I can't fix my DRZ with a plug. Okay, well this is a spoked rim I have off my old bike that was crashed. Uh, this has been sat outside for years, this is not used, so please don't get freaked out by all the rust and stuff on the nipples. So as explained, you have two types of rim, cast and spoked. The cast ones are the ones like alloy wheels, you know, with the big like I showed you earlier on my XJ6, with the big spars, you know, the five or six spokes that make up the rim, and then it's all cast out of one piece of metal. There are no holes on the inside of here because there are no spokes. Okay, so just keep this shape in your mind's eye, because my drawing of it is going to be terrible. So you understand that this is the rim, like so, and then you have your spokes coming through like that, so it's side on. Then your motorcycle tyre has a thing called a bead, which is the edge of the tyre, which has a metal strand in it, which lives kind of down in this corner. And then the tyre will come up here, come out of here. Again, this is not a perfect representation, but <laughs> clearly. And this bead here and here locks in to the outside of the rim. And when there's air pressure inside here, it pushes it into the rim, into this bit, and that's what gives you your air seal. Now, if you have a cast rim, this is great. So you just fill this capacity here with air, and that is your tubeless tyre, because the air can't get out, there's no holes, it's all sealed by the beads, and this is your tyre inflated. Ignore that hole, that's the valve hole, but when you have a spoked rim, you have obviously spokes, and these spokes have to be tensioned, and to do that, they must go through the rim. Now if I can get one of these out, maybe, I'm not going to bend this spoke to get it out much. Okay, the spoke itself has got a mushroomed end on one end and a thread end on the other. The nipple is, it's square, so you can get a, uh, a tool on it from the outside. It also happens, this one happens to have a screw head hole in the end of it, probably more useful for the factory putting it together. Uh, and it's threaded all the way through and there is a hole in there. You can see the hole? So. If you try to fill up this rim like you would with a tubeless tyre, obviously there's nothing keeping the air from coming out of each one of these holes. Now, why do you want spoked rims over cast rims? Basically, spoked rims are used on off-road bikes mostly because they are much better at taking impacts. Uh, because with the spokes, which are all done to an even tension, well, they're actually not necessarily all even, they're done to a, the tension that means that the central hub and the outside of the rim is true. That's why it's called truing a wheel, uh, and you make sure that it all runs in line. When you have an impact in the ground, obviously these spokes can take a little bit of a bend, a bit of a flex. When you're going through corners, there is an amount that the, the spokes will allow this to all flex. Not a lot, but it can take out a lot of the jarring forces, because things that cast metal don't like is impacts, because cast metal is normally quite brittle, which is why you'll see cast wheel or cast rimmed sports bikes if they have a bad crash, very often you'll see one of the wheels has just imploded because it's taken a really hard hit and it's shattered. If you do that off-road, obviously, you're going to have some issues because you're going to break your rims. That's why they tend to use spoked rims. So if you go back to the drawing and you imagine you do have a spoke in here with all the holes all the way around, they're not air sealed and they really can't be because you need to be able to twist them to be able to get the tension correct because over time, as the metal stretches and gives, you do need to torque up your spokes to make sure that it's true. Uh, it doesn't necessarily happen that often, depends on how strong your uh, spokes are and how much abuse they've been given, but it is something that happens and you do need to be able to move these. So that's why you have inner tubes, which is just a big rubber ring looking thing with a valve on it and a couple of locking nuts. And that basically lives inside your wheel. It fills up the gap entirely and it holds the air in. It conforms to the size. Uh, inner tubes are done in ranges of size. So this is, I believe it's a 160 to a 180. So you can, that being the width, because obviously rubber stretches, you just have to fill that void. 
And that's the way you stop the air coming out of here. So cast, no holes, tubeless, because it's holding its own air in, spoked, has holes, needs tube. So that is the two types of motorcycle rims that you get. Now I'm gonna tell you about the third one, <laughs> which is basically a tubeless spoked rim. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Either you have the same sort of uh, profile that you have for your uh, cast wheel, so it hasn't hung your holes here, and then you have a track which is welded on the inside here, but it doesn't break through to the inside of the wheel, and you can attach your spokes onto here. So they're actually externally attached, and you do your adjustments elsewhere. Uh, another way is they'll put uh, a flange here on the rim, and then the spokes will come through that. Uh, I'm trying to think bikes that do that. Is the MV Augusta do that? That's where you end up with a rim, like so, and you'll see lots and lots of little nice coloured things to go with the spokes that are visible all the way around the wheel like that. And then the spokes go to those like that. And obviously they're never coming through here, so you're not going to lose air. So this is how you can have a tubeless spoked rim. There is, however, another way, which is where you use a standard spoked rim like this, or like the example that I was showing you that I took the spoke out of, and you just put tape, self-adhesive tape, not just normal stuff, across the tops of all the holes. So that then seals all of your spoke holes against air getting out that way, and then you don't need to use a tube because it's all going to stay in here. Spoked rims, they're... Um, the radius, you know, for the bead here is, is enough to make the, the, the tyre stick here and be airtight. So it isn't this that changes, it's, it's this. Uh, if you want to see that being done, my mate Jake the Garden Snake has a video doing that. He's also currently doing a series of videos where he's turning an MT-07 into an adventure MT-07. And I believe he's going to be doing the same thing on that. So if you want to see that done, go and watch his video. It's a way of being able to get rid of tubes uh, and it only costs you about, you know, 30 bucks or something for the tape. I'm not sure exactly how much it is. So there you go. That now classes the four types of the two types of motorcycle rims that you get. I am joking. There are probably more types as well, but I'm generalizing here. Anyway, now to explain if you haven't worked it out why you can't plug a tubed tire like you can with a tubeless. Let's just imagine that this is the outside of the tire. Okay, so you know the, the middle of the wheel, spokes going this way, but we're not talking about a spoked one in this instance. We're talking about a cast rim tubeless so you get a screw go through your tire you've got a hole in it the air goes down if you have a tubed one the exact same thing happens however with the tubeless one you can take the screw out you get this little tool that you shove through that hole uh, and you pull it backwards and forwards and it basically reams the hole out it cuts it a hole then you shove from the outside some of this corking material plugging material and it's a whole kit that you can buy and basically the roadside you can plug that hole it'll become airtight and you just refill it with air and jobs are good and you're back on the road. Sometimes I believe those can be um, temporary, sometimes they might be permanent. They also do a version that's like a lily pad uh, or a backwards mushroom that you basically put on the inside of the tire that you pull through the tire uh, and that way it has a big circle on the inside with a little hole that goes through the actual wheel. Um, and this obviously with the air pressure being adhered and pushed outwards inside the tire is forcing the rubber into the hole which seals itself so these are better than the normal just push through ones as far as i know but obviously you have to take the tire off to do this you can't do it on the side of the road and get yourself going that way so as you've definitely worked out by now the reason that i cannot plug a drz spoked tubed tire is that when i push that tool in here it's going to just make more holes in my inner tube um, and the thing that's holding the air in is the inner tube, not the thing. So I could, you know, I could do that, I could ream it through, I could put the plug in, and I could go to pl uh, pump it back up again, and all that's going to happen is all the air is just going to come back out the spoke holes. So no, you have cast rims, which are tubeless, spoked rims, which are tubed, converted spoked rims, which can be tubeless, and then you can have tubeless spoked rims, which are designed to be tubeless from the factory. I don't know of anyone running a tube in a cast tubeless wheel for any reason. It doesn't make any sense that you would do that. It's just gonna add weight to the wheel, I think. Although in theory, you can put an inner tube inside a cast wheel, and then that gives you the option to take the inner tube out and put a new inner tube in there and pump it up um, without having to plug the hole on the outside. But obviously that's easier than taking the whole wheel off, so I don't see why anyone would do that. 
So if you're trying to work out what you've got on your bike, if it's a cast wheel, it's going to be tubeless. If it's got spokes, it's most likely going to be tubed, unless those spokes are attached on the outside of the wheel like this, or on some other way. If they actually go into the rim, you have tubes, unless someone converted them. There is one way, though, that you can actually tell on any of these quite easily. I think this always works. The valve for a tube tire is actually attached to the tube and this has to protrude through that valve hole that I showed you earlier. On a cast rim, obviously you don't have an inner tube to hold onto a valve. All you have is a hole and then you have a separate thing which basically looks like this. You have your, your normal inflator bit, this bit, uh, and then it will have like a rubber piece like this. This is brilliant drawing. And this is the inside of your rim and then your dust cap goes on here. And that has a piece of rubber that comes through and on the inside of the rim it also has a piece like that. And it basically gets sealed against the, um, the cast wheel through the pressure and through it being such a tight fit. And if on the outside of your rim you can see something like this with a nut holding it down, you're gonna have a tube. If it's got one of these rubbery things, which I'm gonna get some B-roll for, like this, then you've got tubeless. If you want to take your spoked rims and convert them into tubeless, go and check out Jake's video. I'll put a link in the description. And as I say, he is currently working on his MT uh, adventure bike conversion. And as part of that, he's going to be doing it again, I believe. Uh, but he already has a video up there where they did it the first time. And he's had them uh, like that for a year now and they haven't let any air out. It's worked perfectly. So there you go. I think that's everything you need to know as a base level about motorcycle rims, what types there are and why you have certain things. Please remember, if you found this video useful, to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not, I'm on my way to 100k, and I know 60% of the people watching this video won't be subscribers. And if you really want to help my channel, consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.